we are going to talk about advantages of silicon carbide over silicon mosfets especially looking from the perspective of power electronics application how a silicon carbide mosfet is advantages as compared to the silicon device you may have heard that there are silicon carbide mosfets which are now coming of the ratings of let's say 1.2 kV blocking even 1.7 kV blocking even in some companies are commercially selling modules of 3.3 kV blocking right so these are all now commercially available so we can buy it we can use it and develop a power electronics circuits one of the major application for for these devices have been electric vehicles and little bit subsequently in in different videos we are going to talk specifically in which all ways these devices can help in improving electric vehicles but but electric vehicles is looked upon as a major market for silicon carbide mosfets so the question is that why is silicon carbide mosfets becoming more and more famous what are the advantages that they offer of course with the advantages there are challenges but in this video we are not going to talk about challenges maybe a little bit later but in this video we are going to talk about the advantages of silicon carbide mosfets before we jump to that let's just look at what do we call it as an ideal switch the reason is because uh, whenever we learn power electronics usually the the story starts with a switch which is an ideal switch right which usually drawn like this or sometimes it's drawn like this sometimes it's drawn like this so these ideal switches are nothing but they are the components used in power converter for example if it's a buck converter then this is where the ideal switches are usually drawn this is how they are usually drawn right from these ideal switches the expectation is that they should have zero on state resistance so what i mean by on state resistance that means when the switch is closed the resistance between point a and point b should be zero so the ideal switch should have zero on state resistance and moreover during the switching when you are turning on the switch and when you are turning it off it should happen instantaneously right so instantaneous switching so switching should happen in a you know very very fast negligible amount of time that is what how we define the ideal switch of course uh, we in reality we don't get this ideal switch but the question is that which kind of switches or which kind of devices can get us closer to this ideal realization of the switches those would be the one which let's say we would prefer to use when we are developing a power electronics circuit so now let's look at uh, uh, silicon carbide devices and uh, silicon carbide properties and compare it with the silicon properties so if you see this chart shows you about five properties right we'll not look at all of them in this video we we'll are focus on few of them <clears throat> let's first look at the energy gap right band gap uh here we are showing silicon silicon carbide as well as gallium nitride which is another type of wide band gap device but we are probably not going to talk about gallium nitride in this video so let's only focus on the green and and the pink graph of course as the name suggests uh, these are wide band gap devices or wide band gap material and therefore their band gap is higher so you see energy band gap for uh, pink which is silicon carbide is somewhere here on the other hand that for uh, for silicon is somewhere here how does it help why does it help so a higher band gap allows for higher breakdown field right so again you see the comparison silicon carbide breakdown field is somewhere close to 2 
on the other hand for silicon it's much much lower a higher breakdown field essentially implies that for a given unit of material if you apply a certain voltage you want to block a certain voltage v instead of requiring a large length you can work with much smaller length and it would still be able to block a voltage v right so let's say this is the length which you need for silicon versus this is the length you need for silicon carbide so so the material that you want to use to block a large voltage suddenly becomes lesser and that helps in reducing the on resistance right because now electrons this is in off state but when you put this device is on state and electrons are going to travel in this path then in case of silicon carbide they have to travel a much shorter path and therefore much smaller on resistance so these are the two things which actually allows you to build devices with lower on resistance which was one of the property that we are looking into moving on the other aspect the other important thing on on this graph is the thermal conductivity right now how does the thermal conductivity help if you see a typical device a typical device would would be mounted on a heat sink right let's say this is the heat sink and this is the device and within that device there may be few layers of different material insulation and so on and then there is the chip which sits here right now if if this chip would obviously be dissipating power because there are going to be switching loss there are going to be conduction loss and the power that it is dissipating that heat loss is going to flow in this direction now as it flows in this direction uh the voltage uh, the 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 flow of the heat loss increases the temperature in the chip let's call it tj so the tj increases as more and more heat flows right if you have better thermal conductivity of the chip it helps in a way that it reduces tj for the same amount of heat flow right for the same amount of heat flow now because you have better conductivity your tj will reduce this can also be looked so in a way for the same ambient temperature right you can now afford to have more losses or you can reduce the size of the heat sink for example because already your chip conductivity is very good right so you can afford to have little bit poor conductivity on the heat sink size so you can use a smaller heat sink a lesser number of fins so improvement in thermal conductivity can help you make overall system power electronic converter much smaller so that is the advantage so the thermal conductivity helps in reducing cooling requirements let's say if you put it broadly right <clears throat> the third so this was point number 1 this is point number 2 point number 3 is related to switching frequency now if you see since the blocking uh, capability has increased as we have seen on in this right hand side figure right? therefore you can afford to have much much smaller chips if you have smaller chips then something called as parasitic capacitances which exists between the gate to source gate to drain as well as source to drain right these are the parasitic capacitances you can say this gate this is a mosfet gate source drain capacitance between gate and drain capacitance between gate and source capacitance between drain and source now these parasitic capacitances usually become smaller uh in the white band gap or silicon carbide devices one of the reason is because the chips are now much much smaller and therefore the cross section areas are also less and that helps in reducing these capacitances play a major role in the switching speed 
Why? Because every time you want to turn on, turn off this device, you have to charge these capacitance and discharge these capacitance. So a smaller value of capacitance would essentially means that you can switch these devices much much faster because now you can charge the cap much faster, you can discharge the cap much faster. So inherently silicon carbide devices have been found to offer smaller capacitance thereby increasing the switching frequency. Uh, there is also some literature which does talk about correlation of saturated electron velocity, the maximum electron velocity uh, also helping in terms of the switching uh, uh, speed because this property is also uh, much better in silicon carbide as compared to the silicon. But, but my understanding is the main phenomena is because of the switching capacitance is reduction, right? So this is the third so to say advantage which we are seeing in, in silicon carbide over silicon which is lower parasitics capacitances. Alright, with these three one, one is lower on state resistance, the second one is improved thermal conductivity and third one is the lower parasitic capacitance. Let us move forward and let us see how these three can help us uh, achieve a power converter which is better in performance as compared to uh, using a silicon device. Here I have tried to correlate the basic material property of silicon carbide along with its effect and then finally what is the benefit in power electronics applications. So higher breakdown field, right? A higher breakdown field is there in silicon carbide which leads to of course which leads to higher endurance to radiation right because of higher band gap so therefore again silicon carbide is looked upon as a suitable solution if we talk about uh, uh, application which are extraterrestrial anyways so but this is not usually what uh, what uh, really helps us in consumer applications or electric vehicles to be more precise so let us look at other things so higher breakdown voltage higher breakdown field right higher breakdown field lead us to thinner or smaller devices this we have seen this leads to smaller channel length or smaller length and thereby reducing the rds on of the device this leads to smaller uh, length of the device which reduces the conduction losses right as the conduction loss reduces the converter efficiency increases as the losses reduces further you can also reduce the size of the heat sink right because now your heat flow is less right so to maintain the same tj since heat flow has reduced you can reduce the size of the heat sink or size of the cooling requirement so in a way the higher band gap leading to higher field leading to smaller device leading to lower rds on leading to improvement in efficiency as well as reduction in the heat sink the other uh, important uh, property if we if we as we have discussed is the faster switching now the faster switching essentially means the reduction in the switching loss right or you can so uh, since the device uh, we are going to talk about the switching phenomena uh, in, in subsequently in different videos where we can understand that why a faster switching or a smaller switching time actually helps us in reducing the switching loss. So a faster switching property means it will have lesser switching losses which would reduce the overall losses and then again give you the same advantages as that of increasing efficiency or uh, leading to smaller devices but at the same time. Uh, a, f a faster uh, switching uh, frequency would lead to reduction in the size of magnetics and capacitors and inductors right why is that happening because most of the power electronics application we use this kind of a filtering arrangement to filter out some of the switching frequencies right and and on the right side we don't want this high frequency content 
so if if we can switch much faster instead of this waveform our waveform would be you know very faster switch then essentially the slow pass filter cutoff frequency can be changed and you can now live with much smaller values of lnc right so increase in switching frequency helps in reducing the size of lnc components the third was higher thermal conductivity right but this was the third main property when we talked about ball electronics applications this again helps us reduce the heat sink requirement this is something which we have already seen a few minutes before so overall there are for a for a ball electronics application there are three main advantages one is smaller conduction loss right point number one the second one is uh, better thermal conductivity right and the third one is lower parasitic capacitance or faster switching frequency these are the three properties of silicon carbide combined gives us a better switch as compared to a silicon uh, mosfet now uh, there are certainly these advantages but but nothing comes for free so there are quite a few challenges associated with these devices as well and those challenges we will talk about in in subsequent uh, lectures